I mean, I can, you know, tell Jackson off to lime blue in the face and he'll just look at me and think, whatever, <laughs> and then go away and bark at somebody. Or, the problem or, with dogs is you just forgive them because they look so cute. You're like, exactly, oh, fine. exactly. So I couldn't ever say my dog is well trained, but I do love him. OK, well, let's stop him. Actually. Yeah. Welcome to the studio, Jacqueline Wilson. Hello. Hi, it's lovely to be back here. I love this station. Thank you so much for coming back. Uh, you are celebrating your brand new book, My Mum, yep. Tracy Beaker, which I have finished and absolutely loved. Oh, I'm so pleased. I adored it. Uh, tell, tell the listeners why you went back to Tracy, I guess. Why was she the pet character? Do you know, I've been joking about bringing Tracy back as an adult for ages. And sometimes I've sort of riffed away when I'm talking to an audience saying, you know, if they've been asking me questions about Tracy Beaker as a child. And I said, I really ought to find out what she's like as an adult. Um, think of the titles you could have. Tracy Beaker's single mum, <laughs> Tracy Beaker's midlife crisis. And I've gone on and on like this. And then last year I suddenly thought, why don't I actually find out what Tracy is really doing and what sort of a mum she would be? And the book is not written by Tracy herself. Well, it's not in her voice. It's in the voice of her daughter, Jess, who's 10, the very same age that Tracy was in the first book, the story of Tracy Beaker. But she's very different to Tracy, isn't she? She's she a lot more is. sensitive and she's just she's just a bit... A quieter girl. It, it's interesting in that she looks a spitting image of her mum, apart from her little glasses. But she is a different girl, as you say. However, although she's quieter and sensitive, she's a little bit of a chip off the old block. <laughs> she can stand up for herself. She can be quite funny and feisty if the, the time is needed. But certainly nobody could rival Tracy for her personality. Jess does have her own mind. Uh, so I don't think it's giving away too much to the listeners that in the book, uh, Tracy gets a new boyfriend and uh, Jess is very adamant on her thoughts about the boyfriend uh, and doesn't uh, isn't quiet about it, doesn't doesn't hide it. No, I, I think it's always very difficult if if you're very close to your mum and there's just been the two of you and then a new boyfriend for the mum comes on the scene. I think for most kids, it takes them a little while to adjust because, you know, you don't really want to think of your mum in those terms of she's somebody's girlfriend. And whoever it is, even if they're absolutely lovely, they're a little bit of an intruder into your own special relationship. And in this particular case, um, Jess finds Tracy's boyfriend, Sean Godfrey, very irritating indeed. Although a lot of girls, I would have to say, would be thrilled to bits because he has been a famous professional footballer and um, now he's, he's still considered a bit of celebrity that might pop up in celebrity magazines and he's got his own sports club and he's... He wears incredibly sort of weird clothes that <laughs> are considered fashionable and he's got a big house with a swimming pool and it's the life a lot of kids would like to lead, but not my Jess. Or was that modelled on anybody in particular? Did you have to read some Heat magazine and some OK and <laughs> Hello? It's quite tempting. Um, I, just, I just imagined what he would be like and you see... The, the thing is that for anybody who's an ultra, ultra Tracy fan, they might have read a sequel to Tracy, the story of Tracy Beaker called The Dare Game, although it's been retitled now for as I Dare You, Tracy Beaker. And in this book, Tracy has just been fostered by Cam and she's still finding life quite difficult. And she hangs out in this old abandoned house with a couple of boys who are a bit misfits too. And one of them is this big hulking, slightly no hope lad that we never hear his real name. He's just nicknamed football because it's the one thing he's good at. Mm -hmm. And in he is the very boy that has now grown up to be Sean Godfrey, famous professional footballer. And I, I, wanted, I wanted to show what he would be like grown up. And um, he seems very flash and confident on the surface, but I think he's still got a lot of insecurities from his childhood too. And also, if you, if you meet up with somebody from your childhood after quite a few years mm -hmm. have gone by, 
there's the actual nostalgic thing that sure. often works wonders and makes you think they're the very person for you because you share a lot of history together. So I let Tracy find out whether this is a great match or not. Especially given that Tracy went through so much. Uh, for her, it must be like, oh, finding somebody from your past is a bit of an anchor, isn't it, almost? It, it really is. And... They understand each other and not a lot of people actually understand my Tracy is the way she is. And um, and right from that very first book, he's always had a bit of a crush on her and she can get away with murder. I mean, he's always been much bigger than her. When they were kids, they would have kind of mock fights and everything. And um, and Tracy would often be the winner. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few uh, callbacks to previous Tracy Beaker books, which I think Tracy Beaker and Jacqueline Wilson fans will absolutely love. It's brilliant. I, I tried very hard not to get too carried away because... There are lots of children out there who've never even heard of Tracy Beaker, uh, maybe missed out on seeing the long-running television series or whatever. And I wanted it not to matter in the slightest. You can just start this book about Jess and see what she thinks and realise she's got a a lovely but very um, embarrassing at times mum, put it that way, but also... I did feel that anybody who was a real Tracy fan might actually find it fun to to read my mum, Tracy Beaker, and see some of these characters from the past. And uh, people have told me when I've been talking about the book this past week or so, um, you know, is Justine Littlewood in it? And yeah. She's the one I want to meet Absolutely. up with because Justine and Tracy were such great enemies when they were both kids in the children's home. And yes, Justine does make a pretty dynamic appearance. <laughs> she pops up, doesn't she? Yeah. She pops up. Yes, yes. <laughs> she, she says hello. Uh, so how does it work with the illustrations? Because Nick Jarrett is your illustrator and they are peppered all the way through the book and they're brilliant. They really help. I think I'm so lucky because with the original book, The Story of Tracy Beaker, that was the very first time Nick and I had worked together and I was thrilled with his illustrations then and I begged to have lots of illustrations and he really turned up trumps and I hoped I would get lots of illustrations for this book but Nick is very very busy with his own brilliant books and he still you know illustrates other authors books how very dare he <laughs> <laughs> why isn't he mine exclusively <laughs> keep, keep, him, keep him close give him a hug and just keep him close <laughs> I know but um but so I thought I knew he would give do some brilliant illustrations but I was just taken aback by the men I haven't counted them but there are so many there's practically one on every page or more and they're they're exactly the way you would imagine all the characters from the old books to have grown up they look precisely right and he's very good at detail for instance um I, in my description of justine littlewood i had described her hairstyle and without realizing it i was thinking of the child actor that played justine on the telly series oh, right. and um and so i had suggested to nick that that you know her hairstyle would be a slightly grown-up variant of that but Nick said, ah, but the the Justine in the books actually had very different kind of Bob. And absolutely right. He, he's just he's better than a copy editor wow, for yeah. making sure that, that I'm on the right track. But then I do him a favour, too, in that I, if I've described a particular outfit in the book and Nick has been thinking about other things and thinking exactly what would look right, what sort of coat or whatever on on Jess and then when he's gone back to to the text after he submitted the drawings and realized no it's the wrong time of year or something um he will sometimes say do you think you could twiddle just that sentence just so it's not so obvious and you know because we're such old friends and we've worked together 28 oh. years um, we, we cut each other a bit of flack and it works a treat sounds like he's very handy to have around it keeps you right well it's it's lovely because for, for a while Nick moved away to Scotland and we didn't see each other very much but now um, we only live about 10 miles away from each other so can meet up and have a fun time and that's great now you mentioned uh, Tracy Beaker on TV 
Could we maybe imagine one day seeing uh, Tracy Beaker as a mum on TV? I think that's very, very possible. Um, there's, we're certainly in very positive discussions now <laughs> and um, I am crossing my fingers. Yes. But yes, I'm pretty certain. Okay, I'm she taking that be. as a Fun Kids exclusive. Yes. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> Is there any character that you've written that you'd like to go back to eventually, a bit like Tracy? Anyone from the past you think would be um, fun to find out about? I have had many requests to um, find out what's been happening to... Ellie Magda and Nadine, I wrote four girls yes. about them. And they. I wrote about them when they were 13. Um, and it seems so long ago now because they didn't have mobile phones, social media hadn't been invented, life was so different yeah. then. Um, and yet underneath it all, those girls went through the same sort of turmoil and that, that modern girls do now. Um, but heaps of girls have said come on we want to find out what they're like and in fact I'm not um, on social media very much myself <laughs> but there was a sort of little Twitter storm a, li- a little drizzle shall we say Ooh, I'll do. Yeah, that's enough, yeah. uh, uh, somebody had said what do you think might happen to those girls and there were lots of answers really funny very inventive ones that I, I remember reading at the time um, whether I ever go back to them and see if they have teenage girls now and how they might cope and it might be fun to see from one of their daughter's point of view. Yeah. I, I rather hope that those three are still friends in, in some one way or another. But who knows? We'll I th- I think I don't want to be considered a one trick pony just right. <laughs> she's resurrecting all her old characters. But just occasionally I'm tempted. I think you should write one big book and just do lots of crossovers and just put all the characters in one book and see them in the same world. Yeah, and well, I mean, if if I was told, oh, it sounds a bit doomy, but right, this is probably the last book you'll ever write. I think I would love to hold some kind of huge party where different characters would pop up and, and meet each other. What fun that yes, would please. be. Yes, please, do that anyway. Okay. That'd be amazing. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Is, do you have a particular favourite character apart from Tracy? Um... I'm very fond of Hetty Feather, my Victorian foundling girl, and um, I don't think she'll be happy to just sit on the sidelines for too long. I think she might bob up unexpectedly in a book in the future. That's a hint. Oh, lovely. Um, but certainly not my mum, Tracy Beaker, because she'd be, I know, 150 or something. <laughs> maybe maybe Jess can find a book. Yes. And it's got Hetty in it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, no, she's, Hetty's not there now. She's retired. Um, I also, you know, looking way back in the past, I've always been fond of a girl called Dolphin, who was in a book called The Illustrated, Illustrated Mum. And... Um, it would be, I, I would hope that she's having a very happy time now. There wouldn't be much for me to write about, but she had such a difficult childhood and uh, she's the one of my characters that I would like to sort of sit on my knee and comfort her <laughs> because it, it it's a hard time for her. I th- I'm sure a lot of girls who read that who are going through a similar thing would have been delighted to just read, like with all of your books, to read somebody going through the same thing as you. I think that's, well, well what I find, if I have something horrible happen to me in my life, I don't ever really feel tempted to read one of those self-help books. What I want to find is a, a fiction book that where the character is going through something similar and then I can comfort myself by seeing how this particular person is dealing with this situation and maybe I could get some tips on how to do it or indeed some really dire warnings about no, 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 <laughs> never behave like this character. And so I think if any child is going through a bad time, an unsettled time or just simply broken up with their friend at school and suddenly in that horrible position where you haven't got anybody to sit next to um then i'd like them to see that they're not alone this happens to heaps of people and it's a bit like i'm metaphorically holding out a hand and say it's okay you'll you'll be all right and if children are blessed enough reading the books to feel well my life's nothing like this you know i've got heaps of friends lovely family etc etc it does give them a little bit of insight into what life can be like for some other children yeah, reading about somebody other, somebody else's world is a very helpful thing, I think. It is. Yeah. I, I mean, this is what I like to do. This is part of the reason why I love to read books so much. One thing also, by the way, I really wanted to tell Jess just to train Alfie, the dog. 
<laughs> well, that's she, my main thing. She is a bit hopeless, I must admit, and um, and yet I have to say that my own rescue dog Jackson isn't the most obedient of dogs. And we went to puppy training together, and it was quite humiliating because there were several children at puppy training, and they were much better than me at <gasps> training him. And it's funny because with my daughter Emma. I, I did, I, I was a very loving mum and hopefully a fun mum, but I was quite sort of strict with her about manners and all the rest of it. I mean, I can, you know, tell Jackson off till I'm blue in the face and he'll just look at me and think, whatever, <laughs> and then go away and bark at somebody. Or, <laughs> the problem or, with dogs is you just forgive them because they look so cute. You're like, exactly, oh, fine. exactly. So I couldn't ever say my dog is well trained, but I do love him. <laughs> OK, we'll let Jess off in that case. Yes. Now, before you go, I've got a quick quiz for you, if that's OK. OK. Now, it's all about your own books. So oh, gosh. hopefully <laughs> this will go well. We'll find out. It's called the name game, right? So you can probably guess. It's all about names. Uh, I reckon you'll. I reckon you'll get this. I reckon this will be okay. I'm gonna ease you in gently. Okay. Uh, in girls in love, what is the nickname of Ellie's brother? Eggs. Yes. Perfect. Great. Yay! Thought you get that. Lovely. <laughs> okay. What's the real name of biscuits from Cliffhanger? Oh goodness, goodness, goodness. He's someone McVitty. He is someone McVitty. <laughs> I'll give you half a point. Billy. Billy, Billy McVitie, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you name the two sisters in Double Act? Ruby and Garnet. Yes, I love Double Act so much. Uh, in The Bed and Breakfast Star, what was the name of the hotel? Um, oh, goodness me. And it's lost some of its letters, hasn't yes. it? And I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's the Royal Hotel. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Or the uh, Oil Huttle, I think. <laughs> I think I was going to call it. Uh, lovely. Uh, in Cookie, what does Beauty name her pet rabbit? I think mm. This might be quite tricky. Is this the poor little rabbit to... Yeah. Oh, yes. That, do you know, I think that's probably one of the worst things I've ever written about. <laughs> <laughs> Scrub it out. <laughs> um, what is the name of the rabbit? I don't know. Birthday. Oh, birthday. Yes. Oh, to be yes. fair, you've written a lot of books. I have written a lot of books, but these are brilliant questions. Well, now, did you set them? Yes, I know. <laughs> I've, I've got one last one. Okay. Now, this is, this is going to be... This is a one, two, three, four, five or six pointer, I think, depending. Uh, can you name the books in the Hetty Feather series? Hetty Feather? Yeah. Um, Sapphire Battersea, yeah. Emerald Star, mm -hmm. Diamond, because mm -hmm. it's about Hetty, Little Stars, and there's Hetty Feathers Christmas, and then Hetty also pops up in Clover Moon and Rose Rivers. Yes, you get two extra points because I didn't Yay! have those down here, but you're right, she is in there. <laughs> this is good. Oh, well, I've redeemed myself. You have. I think, I think I'm going to give you near top marks. Thank you very game, much. <laughs> which is, I think, is pretty good, pretty good going. Uh, Jacqueline Wilson, thank you so much for coming by, Fun Kids. Oh, thank you. It's been such fun, really. <laughs> and we should say everybody needs to go and check out the book right now, My Mum Tracy Beaker. 